Good evening. You are watching the Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. Tina Brown is one of the most unique magazine editors ever. When she was in her mid-twenties, she started Tatler. She made a big success out of Vanity Fair. She did the same with New Yorker, a little blip with talk. Then she wrote a book about Princess Diana. She was working on a book on Hillary Clinton, I think we can ask her, when she was asked to start a website called The Daily Beast. What is The Daily Beast? We're gonna find out. Is it animal, mineral, vegetable? What is the nature of the beast? And here to tell us, <laughs> tell us about that. The beast is feral. The beast is feral. <laughs> Where'd you get the title? It came right out of that great Evelyn War classic comic novel scoop where they had this crazily badly run newspaper, The Daily Beast, and it has always been my fancy to edit something called The Daily Beast. And so we're gonna show the audience a recent front page, can we call it that, of The Daily Beast. There it is. Look, there's all sorts of things on the, on the cover of the, of the Daily Beast. If that, if it's not really the cover, because that picture in the left-hand corner is a moving, it's one of three or four that keeps moving around. And probably the page changes. We can ask Tina about that in a moment. Now, Tina, I'm going to play a game with you. I'm going to put up on the screen one of your most famous magazine covers ever. And then ask you why you can't put this on the Daily Beast as the only Daily Beast cover. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Woo! Wow. <laughs> we know that one. We know that one. Okay, so the, the fun of the game here is, I would have thought, that if our magazine editor, oh no, I'm not, I'm getting ahead of the story, because I don't know if you are a magazine editor or not. If I were the chief proprietor of uh, the Daily Beast, uh, why is not I can't do something like that? You can, I would definitely put Demi Moore and Hitomi in the first, uh, first image in that top box. I mean, that's one of the reasons that we made the box nice and big and handsome and glossy, is that we can do exactly that kind of image. I would do it in a heartbeat. Now, the impact, however, since it's a moving target, wouldn't be the same because Demi Moore is on the cover and on the newsstands for 25, 30 days and people are going to be talking about it because it sits there as sits there by itself, doesn't it? Well, that, 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 that moving box rotates and it can rotate as fast as we want it to rotate. If we had that picture now, we were breaking that, I would put it up and I would leave it up. It would actually stay up for longer than a month, very likely. And uh, as a rotator? Yeah, sure. Or we could put it all over the site. I mean, the great wonderful thing about the web is that you can keep things up as long as you want. That image on the web would go viral in an instinct. And actually, it would be all over the world in a heartbeat. And it was all over the world when it was picked up in newspapers. But this way, we'd be augmenting the traffic of, um, of the website simply by putting it up. So there's no, there's no difference in that regard. I mean, what is exciting is to see it catching immediately on your traffic graph. It's like a kind of cardiogram that, you know, that anyone who has a website watches all day long as this thing spikes or doesn't. No way, you're kidding me. No, yeah, no. sure, and when you see the spike, I mean, you'd put Demi Moore in her stomach up and you'd see it spiking like that and it would be going through the roof. It would be like the patient has, is having a, you know, a, a, a sort of multi, you know, seizure of excitement. You, so you sit there with the, looking at the spike, really? Absolutely. Do you, do you change your uh, stuff? Yeah, all the time. If you see if you see the spike flatlining, you decide to move that thing off. No, no kidding. So what what have been some of the hot items for you recently? Well, we've had you know what is exciting I have to say about the web is that you find audiences for very smart material as well as very uh, sexy material. I mean, obviously the obviously uh, sex always does very well in any medium, right? So you're always going to traffic is always going to have a spike with something sexy. But what I find more exciting is that we often have spikes for really hot idea pieces. I mean, all the way through uh, the election, we got immense traffic for pieces like when Christopher Buckley decided to endorse uh, Obama instead of uh, McCain. He comes from a long uh, line of, of, of Republican family, and he, he nonetheless endorsed Obama. That went absolutely crazy on our on our site. Well, that was and yet, a, yeah. so did yeah. another piece by. Um, uh, a former uh, John Edwards speechwriter, Wendy Button, who switched sides and became um, a, a Republican. So it's one of those things where uh, sometimes the idea can just drive a lot of heat. And, and lately we've had a lot of traction with our financial material. I mean, we had Charlie Gasparino break the news recently um, that uh, John Thane had spent you know, over a million bucks uh, decorating his, his bathroom and all that on, and his office. 
and uh, that 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 story went crazy, and it and it went absolutely viral, and it and it you know John Thane resigned. So I mean, the thing is that. It's really about being on the news. Sometimes the news is politics, sometimes it's business, and sometimes, well, actually always, sex sells. <laughs> <laughs> sex. So, I mean, well, Demi, is Demi Moore, is that a sexy shot? Uh, Pretty sexy. So she did have no clothes on, Jimmy, in case what? you hadn't noticed. She's not just pregnant, she is naked, too. <laughs> She's naked, too, really? <laughs> uh, daily. Uh, you talk, when you talk about what you had, you're talking about a daily this, a daily that, a daily this. Now. Uh, being daily is not the same as being monthly. No, it's not actually. We're, we we update all day long, so we're not just daily. We're sort of every few hours we're okay, changing so and mixing around. Um, I thought I was going to find that uh, a big stress, but actually, in some ways, because the culture is so accelerated, because news now is twenty four seven, it's less stressful than trying to struggle to keep your news and your features and your sort of magazine sort of safe from piracy and, and, and from being raided and, and picked over and, and all the news has gone to other people's websites. I find it far less stressful to be able to put it up on my own website, you know, make the news, get the viral links, own the story. It's less stressful. At least I know that it's there. It's less stressful than having a magazine. Yeah, much. And that's because you're going to lose it in the magazine? Yeah. The magazines today, it's terrifying. I mean, I, I, I don't know how I would have stuck it. I mean, I, I am, A, naturally very impatient. Uh, I, I now finally have found a medium commensurate to my impatience. <laughs> Secondly, I'm very kind of uh, competitive with my news. So it would really make me crazy to sit on a news item, you know, with a monthly. And for a start, it's not just that it takes so long to go to press, but also then it sits around for a week where it's out but not out, when it's not yet able to reach its newsstands and it kind of trundles around on trucks being delivered and dropped off. And in the meantime, everybody's stealing everything. So basically, it's only great photographs uh, that can uh, drive a, a, a newsstand sale and, and, and a feeling the reader has loyalty to only the overall great package. Well, really, it is. I mean, of course, those pictures also go uh, all over the net as well. But there's something about a full-page glossy picture which will always have appeal. People want to see it in its in its natural kind of glamour. But you know, with news, it's gone by the time the magazine is out. And in fact, now the magazines themselves just put them up online for nothing. And I actually wonder. I question that. Well, you know, I want to uh, read something that you said about yourself. You said once, "It was always my ambition to edit a newspaper." But I think I may have missed the boat, as newspapers in the U.S. are slowly fading into the sunset. I dream they will have a glorious heyday again before they go. That's is, exactly this, true. is this your beautiful heyday as a newspaper proprietor? Well, you know, I, I mean, I always did want to edit a newspaper and um, uh, somehow didn't because there really wasn't the option in the United States because the kind of newspaper I would want to do you know, is, is a more upscale newspaper. I always felt there was a market for the so-called sort of uh, quali pop, as they're called in England, you know, the upscale tabloid, I always thought was a kind of missing niche. And in many ways, that's what the Daily Beast is. It's, a, it's, it's really an upscale tabloid. You know, we, 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 we combine, uh, you know, the intelligent sort of politics and, and news with, with the kind of more popular, uh, you know, entertainment and, 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 and emotional content and, and, and the kind of material that you might see in a magazine, which really creates a kind of quality tabloid feel. So I think that's kind of where we've gone. And I don't know anymore that a newspaper could get get the, the finance to go. And uh, certainly, I don't think you're going to see new newspapers uh, unless somebody can figure out a way. Maybe it will be a free newspaper. But then again, the younger generation are not reading newspapers at all. So uh, my kids, for instance, they, they read everything online. Uh, they don't have the same sort of loyalty to the product that I do. What do you read? I read everything. I take five or six papers a morning. I mean, I read uh, and devour over breakfast um, the New York Post, the Daily News, the, 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 the uh, New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, um, uh, the FT, and uh, the, the, the London Times. I mean, I just like it, like it all. So, What time is that, the date is that? Uh, that is, I, I usually go out for breakfast. What I do is I, I sit in my pajamas and change the headlines and mess around with the site and, and put my 10 cents in and make everybody crazy on the site. Five o'clock in the morning? 
between sort of five, sort of six o'clock and, and, and eight, and then uh, after having done that, and the site's up and set for a couple of hours, I'll go out for breakfast with my Wait big minute, boatload of newspapers. You're, you're setting up the site at home at six o'clock in the morning? Well, how, we have, you, we have, a, we have a homepage editor who's in, and the, and the, post, the, the uh, editor of what we call the Cheat Sheet, which yep. is our news uh, a menu of 10 great stories in a day that we've offered people from all over the media. That, that team are uh, cheating, as we call it, uh, on the news from um, 5 in the morning to about sort of um, between 5 and 7.30 in the morning. But how, but how do you do that? How do you know enough to... to well, they're reading everything. They're really but good. you're in charge, right? Well, but you know, I, well, I, I know what they've picked and I can see whether I think it's good and then I'll go out for breakfast and I'll probably add other stories that I see. But they are basically doing the news menu in the morning. But how about the other stuff that we saw where the, um, you have the four... What, what big was box they? things. Yeah, big well, box. Well, a lot of that's original. We, we do but see... But is that up? Do you see that when you get up at 5 o'clock uh, in the morning? The, uh, well, we have some stories coming in late at night. Some arrive overnight. And they're, they're preparing the big box. And I look at it and see whether I like the, the menu and if, if I want to change it. I'm just trying to think what this is like in newspaper terms now. You think the, the newspaper editor, what, he opens up the paper before he goes home? Like that's mm -hmm. a 11 o'clock at, at night. Yeah, I mean, it's is like that what your, that's your what husband really was a very famous yeah, newspaper well, I mean, you, person. Yeah, you know, you rip open the, you know, every editor kind of rips everything apart and makes his own mark. And I have a very talented team. They do a great job. I mean, some days I don't change it. I mean, some days I, I like it just as it is. Other days I have a point of view. And sometimes, you know, things are happening, you know, literally in real time. And, and I, or I might see a story somewhere that I think we haven't got that we should have. But we also generate a lot of news. I mean, a very, it's amazing how writers themselves have speeded up and expect to be able to produce things quickly. I mean, like last night, I contacted a writer who's not a, a staff writer. He's an author. And uh, uh, it was just a few, you know, recently. And I, I said to him, um, you know, the, the guy from the hearings, you know, you're a financial writer. Um, what do you think? You know, we've got to have something for tomorrow morning. And that was like at 8 o'clock at night. He was about to go out for dinner. But when he came in, he wrote the piece. It went up. And it was there. And it drove a lot of traffic this morning. I don't see how it's possible for one human to do this. <laughs> my, theory, my theory about the Daily Beast is this will really offend you that Tina Brown is married to that, we don't say old, that great newspaperman, Harry Evans. So my idea is that at 5 o'clock in the morning, you both wake up. Not true. And Harry's, Harry's sitting there passing stuff to you. Your stuff, no, no, no. And then you're no, talking to I have a great team. Listen, believe me, I, please me, it's not me personally. I'm telling you, I have a fantastic homepage editor who is doing just that at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I have a fantastic um, uh, uh, editor who edits uh, our news cheat sheet in the morning. He's a terrific eye, terrific editor. He's reading everything. And he has a team of interns who are working with him. What time do you figure you, your, your page starts? In the morning, it, well, the team get in at five and six, and, the, and they are uh, writing up their choices of the news, in, in you know, constantly writing them up and, and, and getting ready to post them, and then they all get posted right about seven. So seven is more or less your... Yeah, is your, when it makes the change. It's sort of your fix for the day, but, sure. it's, not, but it's not a fix. And then you sure. sit there and watch the... Uh, does the heartbeat go up and down, and, and how, do you listen to the news? How do you know what to do? <laughs> well, we have our homepage editor. Our homepage editor is there. The, 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 the wires are coming in, right. uh, and it's about us spotting the story we want to put up. I mean, in the end, uh, choosing the news flow and what's up is uh, it's what everybody does in news organizations. It's about your sensibility. I mean, in our case, uh, we might find that Ruth Madoff has just done some, something, and that boom, that's, that our audience is very keenly interested in that. Of course, it's, it different, it's, it's different than uh, people in the news business always changing their mind or, or getting a new take on things when you're looking at an operation that is 24 hours. In other words, if you're a daily newspaper, you've got all day to mess around with what you want to put on the front page. Mm -hmm. You put it on the front page, and that's it. In a, a magazine, there's the pandemonium before the magazine closes, but once it closes, set. But you're a little bit like CNN then, aren't you? Well, yes, except that, you know, the thing about the Daily Beast, it's a combination of aggregated news, which is our 10 stories a day we've chosen from the newspapers, from other websites, from international stories. That revolving 10 keeps updating throughout the day, so that by the end of the day, we've had about 20 or 30 stories there. Then the rest of the, 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 the site is about 
uh, our own generated material, which is us calling writers and saying, why don't you write this, why don't you write that, responding to the news. And a lot of what I, uh, I do is about uh, a sensibility read. This is not, the, the Daily Beast doesn't, doesn't pretend to be a uh, comprehensive uh, coverage of the news menu. It is about the stories we think are interesting, entertaining or provocative, and that we want to spin out to our readers. So there are a whole slews of stories we'll never go, we'll never put up. We simply have an audience in mind who are uh, what I think of as a, a more sophisticated, you know, more uh, media saturated audience who, you know, who are already really quite interested in, in the news. I mean, you can, you can probably assume they're reading two or three outlets and uh, giving them a new sensibility or a new take. We're, we're very big on sort of what I think of is, is counterintuition, you know, the, the, the story that goes against the grain. So it's very much about having that piece that seems to kind of stoke the debate. And, um, you know, I love uh, writers who think interestingly, and, and I have a whole bunch of them in my friendships and Rolodex from doing four magazines. I mean, the great thing about having done four magazines is that there are whole thousands of writers out there that, and I know what they're good at, you know. I mean, part of getting stories quickly is knowing a, a writer who could do it, and B, a writer who wants to do it, and three, a writer who can do it quickly. And you experience that by simply being an editor. You can say, well, so and so is great, but he's going to take forever to do it, and it won't, you know, only three revisions. You need the shortcut is knowing who can do it, how well he can do it, and whether he will do it. And that's what I bring to it, I think. And do they have to do them fast? Yeah, they do. How many, uh, how many stable, how many writers will be on at any point in time? So if we look at, go back to the page we're looking at it, we've got the revolving foursome, whatever it is. We've got the uh, news piece, the, the tends cheat, to, we the, call it cheat, the cheat sheet. The cheat sheet changing. Uh, then we have what we've just been talking about is this, what, uh, uh, I don't want to say original, sta sto original stories. I want to say stable of writers, but yeah. they're not stable writers. And we have video, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fourth oh, element, there's which is video. video. Too. Well, mm -hmm. But so, but you have all these writers. How many writers will be accessible at any particular time? In other words, for me, um, well, how many well, choices do I have? Well, we usually have about uh, 10 things in those highlights. 10 things in highlights? 10 things and, a day, and, and some of them stay up longer than a day. We might move them down, but they're, they're still up. But then, but then they're gone, I guess, aren't they? They stay as long as they get as good traffic, and then you know they're in a list somewhere. I mean, they're in the archives. You know, they're, they're still there. You can still write, so write can, in the so writer and find them. Sure, they're in the ar archives. Um, but you know, we keep them on the home page as long as they are generating traffic. And um, the video is very successful too. We do video all day long. We generate nearly a million uh, 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 hits a month on video, which is about. You're getting what? We get nearly a million hits a month. We, we're getting mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. one point. Uh, we get 1.2, uh, uh, not what I talk about, we're getting 1.9 almost uh, unique visitors, which means coming straight to us uh, a, month. a month, and we have 11 million page views. So 1.9, 1. 1. did you say? Yes. Wow, that's big. Yeah, and 11 million page views. So we're having... Do you ever divide that by 30 to see what you're like as a magazine? <laughs> Or do you, or do you, or a newspaper, I guess. Sure, what well, we do, we're doing I guess really you say, well. no, you say I'm 1.9, that's my monthly yeah, bit, sure. so Vanity Fair was, what was Vanity Fair? 1.2. 1.2. Yeah. 1.9 is a, a lot, yeah, I'm surprised. It is, it is. And you're getting more with the videos? Oh, videos, well, you know, of that 1.9, you know, you'll have like about, I think it's about eight or eight, 800 to 900,000 uh, 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 page views on the, on, the, on the video. We get a lot of people coming. When you talk about a news aggregating, aggregator, what is aggregating site? Uh, you know what that means. I know a little bit about what it means, but the audience probably doesn't know. What do you mean by that? The aggregation part of it, the 10 things a day that we choose and which we keep updating, are things that we've seen all over the web on other people's sites. We do a summary of it so that the reader gets what we call a cheat, which is why we call the cheat sheet. So they get the quick hit on the piece, but they also get a link to the piece itself. So we drive a lot of traffic. For instance, we, dr we drive about 60,000 uh, 60, um uh, uh, hits a month to uh, uh, the London Times because we often pick up things from the London Times and that's a lot. Here's a dumb question. You, if you want a link to the London Times but if the London Times doesn't want to have a link is there anything the London Times can do about it? Well, do they, you of course they you want to have a link. They want to have a link because we augment their traffic. I mean we send 60,000 readers that they didn't have. But do you have, have to ask them for that or you just... No, no because it's... it's you it's, just it's, link? It's, we just link. It's all about the links. It's, it's about all about the links. We have 8,000 incoming blogs that link to us at the moment, which is a lot for a site that's only been up a few months. It, so it, a lot of it is all about the links. When you think about what's really different about websites, the net, it's links. It's links, absolutely. It's about encouraging other people to pick up your site and put it onto their website. And it's so, great. 
What's your, your, your philosophy with respect to the stories which are going to be aggregated, which are the, the daily cheat sheets? Is that they are for an upscale audience or are they uh, for an upscale audience that also go against the grain? They're for a sophisticated audience. They are for readers who, uh, uh, we have a lot of, re uh, we have a, a sign up as well f for just that. So you can actually subscribe to simply that. Oh, well, you can sign up just uh, the And it will go to people's Blackberries and their iPhones. And I know a lot of people who just have the cheat sheet on their iPhones and they just scroll down because for them it's a, a useful, um, quick way to get the, the, the news. They, they rely on us to give them the news that is important, you know, essential and also stuff that they might have missed, like a really good piece in the FT, for instance, you know, about the, uh, the financial meltdown that they might not have seen because maybe they take the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times so they don't see that, or a wonderful piece in the London Guardian that they just simply wouldn't have seen. I mean, you know, it's hard to crawl 50 sites in the morning, and most people have no time. And they, they like the fact that we are a kind of pilot fish that takes them to the story that they might not have had, and so it pr supplies uh, a great sort of conversation menu, if you like, for people who are intelligent and want to be informed. And of course, the great thing is, as we provide also the 200-word uh, summary of the story, you can actually just read down our cheat sheet and get, in a kind of five-minute uh, quick scan, 10 pieces that you might not have the time to read the full piece, but you really do understand, oh, there's a really interesting point of view in the FT about Timothy Geithner this morning that I might not have, met, not, not have seen, and it gives you something that's a new piece of information and a conversational fodder. Now you take the parts we've been talking about of the Daily Beast, and you said 900,000 go to the videos. Mm -hmm. Do we know where the rest of the readers are going? They're going different places all the time. The cheat sheet itself is immensely popular. It gets about 40,000 hits a day uh, uh, in terms of traffic um, regularly every single day, uh, which you know builds up, of course, over a monthly figure. Um, we have um, a, a very big feedback to something we are, I call the big fat story, which is another component on the site. The big fat story is where every day we take one story, we drill down and we give five great pieces that are aggregated around it. And we say, for instance, let's ask a question. Uh, should the banks be allowed to fail? And then we'll aggregate or collect around it, you know, the four or five pieces that we think really answer that question, pro, you know, for, uh, against, etc. maybe some video as well, put it all together in a kind of tree, story tree, and we, you take your mouse and you can roll over each box and you'll get a little summary of each thing. So you can actually roll around that box and get five points of view about should the banks fail. And it's immensely popular as an entity. It's, it's developing a lot of, um, people go to the big fat story now on our navigation bar and they go straight to those things. We've done many really good ones. I mean, uh, any big story at the moment, you're going to see a big fat story aggregation around it and it's become uh, very popular on the site. Uh, algorithms. Do some sites aggregate through algorithms? Yes. Can you explain what that means? Um, the sites that are, that are that means mechanically, uh, without any editorial uh, priority, if you like, uh, um, the algorithm will crawl all the information and simply give you, if you if you want to know about Geithner, there'll be 50 pieces about Geithner, but they won't have, they're not rated from quality. So. What the Daily Beast does, it'll choose you the one piece for the cheat sheet that we think you should read about Geithner and forget the other 50. So you're not going to read uh, all these different versions of the Geithner piece with two or three different changes in them. I mean, you're going to have one piece that we consider the best piece. And that's what our team do when they get in at five in the morning. They're reading 10 Geithner pieces and picking the best one. Now, I'm going to put a picture up just because I love the picture. You've probably been asked about this so many times that it's boring, but I just, if you don't want to talk about it, like I just love this picture. There we go. <laughs> I like that picture, I too. I love that picture. It's a great picture. Yeah. Well, uh, aggregation. Do uh, we think of Ariana Huffing, that's mm -hmm. who that is, by the way, if the yeah, audience didn't know. Do we, do we think of her site as being an aggregator, aggregating site? I don't know what the She has is. some combination of, of, of original stuff um, and some aggregation. Yeah, it's a very much a news aggregation site. It's terrific, it's very successful. She and I are very good friends, as you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, she's been quite an inspiration, I think, to, to a lot of us to get into it. I, I put her in there just for the fun of it, but also to take a look at the news aggregation field, about which I know little, and I bet you my audience knows less. You're a news aggregator in part, and you say she is in part. Are there other sites, or is there going to be a battle as to who's going to be the... There are many sites, there are many, 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 many news aggregation sites. I think right now it's all about the sensibility that you like. I mean, there are 50 million ways to, to slice up the news and 50 million stories you can choose. Ultimately, 
uh, this is an era where editing is making a big comeback in a sense because for a time the buzzword was all about oh we don't need editing it's just aggregation you just crawl the site with an algorithm and you just put up whatever's there fine except that now we're all just drowning in data just drowning in it and drowning in stories and we want to know the best one we don't have the time you know to crawl through all this information out there so i think there's room for any amount of news aggregation sites it's all really going to be about which editors take do you like i mean whose taste do you like do you know if you if you like uh one way of looking at the news then go with this if you want i mean i've always liked a really kind of high low mixture of uh cultural um uh and uh cultural opinion and hard news and it's just the kind of mix that I've liked. I mean, it's it's slightly the more European way of dicing the news, I guess, because I was raised in England where we have, you know, 10 newspapers in the morning and it's very competitive and whoever has the liveliest package, if you like, of and the liveliest sensibility wins the day. So I was raised on that kind of newspaper. I've not ever grown up as a lot of Americans have in a kind of almost monopoly town where there's been one or even just two newspapers and it's it's fairly... Uh, sort of very often news is served up more as a kind of eat your peas news dinner, you know, where she's like, this, you ought to know this. I don't think we ought to know anything, really. I, I think we want to know that what's really important to our lives and uh, what is really uh, going to sort of move uh, uh, the news today. And I think we then need to know things that the editor considers really interesting to know about, whether it's a fascinating piece of foreign affairs or an amazing cultural trend. Well, it's ine inevitable, though, if we look at past experience in publishing, that at some point in time, emerging from all of this, will be a number which would probably be smaller than larger that appeals to the upscale audience. Now, your, yours appeals to the upscale audience. Your magazines appeal to the upscale audience. Uh, and generally speaking, you probably could count the number of good upscale magazines, maybe on fingers one end, mm -hmm. maybe two. Uh, news magazines, two or three historically, maybe we won't have them anymore. Newspapers, two, three, four, five, you read six. Uh, in other words, uh, a small number. So wouldn't you anticipate at some point in time that there'll be a small number of upscale sites? Well, possibly, but I think small is still going to be a much greater number than of print. You know, I think that, I don't know how small it'll be. I think there's so many different audiences that you can appeal to. I mean, the great thing now is that you're, you know, there are such, there's audiences, for instance, who are kind of global travelers, for instance. I mean, in some ways, what I find rather exciting about the web is that you can actually aggregate now an audience of upscale readers, which is pretty huge, because it can also include the upscale sort of uh, global traveler sensibility in London, you know, Amsterdam, uh, Berlin, uh, uh, Bombay, Mumbai, should and, I say. And guess what? We've come to the end at Bombay. <laughs> so what is this? What is this beast? Is it a magazine? Is it a newspaper? What is it? The beast is uh, your uh, curious friend who is there to tell you every day what you should read, know, and hear. Thank you very much, Tina Brown, for coming by. Thank you. And thank you very much for coming by. And come by next week and learn more about the Digital Age. For the Digital Age, I am James Goodale. Good night and come back next week.